Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going to look at unit analysis and conversion. You're going to want to have your notes, pen or pencil, calculator, and then that bright pink sheet that I gave you, that little foldable with the little tabs on it. You're going to want to have that out around you today too. So learning goals, I can find a suitable conversion factor for a rate conversion problem, and I can convert a multi-step multi conversion problem using unit analysis. So why are we converting units? Well, converting units is useful in life. Being able to figure out miles per hour and being able to transfer that to feet per second. Also, chemistry and physics courses require you to change units frequently. You've also been doing this in physical science. So like changing for gravity or acceleration and in chemistry when you get to moles and grams. So hypothetically, what happens when I divide a number by itself? Let's say 3 or divided by 3. What do I get? I get 1, right? So what happens when I divide a unit by itself? I get 1. So in both cases, you get the number 1. This is useful when we think about converting units. So what units in unit analysis is, is basically you're going to use a conversion factor which is basically a really fancy form of one, and units to help us see the steps we need to perform to convert the units correctly. This is what it looks like. You do not need to write down this example. So I'm going to convert 6.25 inches to centimeters. So to do that, I'm going to write my 6.25 inches, find my conversion factor that relates those two, and then multiply the numerator and the denominator and then I get my desired answer. Notice how the inches cross off because I need to cancel units, okay? So here's where that pink sheet comes in. What you need to do is fill in the units as I fill them in. So one meter is 100 centimeters and one kilometer is equal to 100 meters. Now let's go over to the U.S. system. So one foot, you know that's 12 inches. One yard has three feet in there. And one mile has 5,280 feet. And then one mile has 1,760 yards. At one inch equals 2.54 centimeters and one mile is 1.61 kilometers and one foot is 0 0.30 meters. Now let's look at the weight. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. One ton though is equal to 2,000 pounds and one pound is equal to 0 0.45 kil kilograms, excuse me. Now, let's go to liquid volume, so that's kind of like pop and water and stuff. One cup is equal to eight fluid ounces. One pint is equal to two cups. One quart equals two pints. One gallon equals four quarts. And one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. Now, on a test or a quiz, I would always give you these. I do not expect you to memorize them, okay? Just keep them in the back of your mind as you kind of use this. So you're going to want to have this so you can find it when we're working on conversions. So unit analysis is using units and the idea of canceling or dividing units to guide our calculations. So I have a European recipe that calls for five pints of water. I need to know how many cups I should use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up like this. I want to go five pints. Okay. Now, let's find that conversion factor from pints to cups. So, how many pints are in a cup? Well, look here. I got it. One pint is two cups. So, I'm going to go back here. And what happens is you need a pint over a pint. So, you're going to almost kind of diagonal each other. So, I said one pint is equal to, whoops, excuse me, two cups. There we go. Notice now my pints are going to cancel out because it would be pints over pints, which is nice. They're going to cancel out now. 
So now what I can do is multiply across. So I have 5 times 2, 10 cups over 1. So my answer is 10 cups. It's going to take me 10 cups to find out how many cups to make my recipe. You are 14 years old. Most of you are 14. Some of you may be already 15. How many seconds have passed since you were born? That's a lot, isn't it? But let's see if we can figure it out. So I'm 14 years old, right? Or you are, excuse me. Now, at the end here, way at the end, I need to get to seconds. So let's break it down. So the next thing that's smaller than years is days. So I need years across from years. So one year is equal to how many days? 365, right? 365 days in a year. All right. So now my years are gone. Now I'm still going, still need to get to seconds. So today's next smallest hours. So I'd have one day is equal to how many hours? 24 hours, right? So I'll have 24 on top. Notice how days is across from days, just like we want. So now we need hours to be across from hours. So one hour, what's the next smallest? S minutes, right? So 60 minutes, hours are gone. Um, I'm still not at seconds though, but one minute is equal to 60 seconds. My minutes are going to cancel off. Notice the only one left now is seconds. That's exactly what I wanted. So now I need to multiply all the num numerators. So 14 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. You have been alive for. Let me write it down here. 441,504,000 seconds. It's a really long time. So, let's take a look at this next one. A pump can pump water out of a sub hole 3 gallons per second. How many gallons per hour? So, if I have 3 gallons per second, so that means for every one second, I have three gallons coming out, right? So let's put it that way. Three gallons per one second. All right? Now, I need to convert to gallons per hour. So I want gallons to stay. I need to get seconds to hours. So now, hmm, let's convert to seconds to hours. So let's go to minutes, right? So... Notice how seconds has to be across from it. So I know 60 seconds are in one minute. So that allows me to cross cancel them. So then I am done on that side. Um, now I need my minutes to cancel out. So I know 60 minutes is in one hour. Minutes are gone. Notice how I'm not touching gallons because I only want to convert seconds. So now I'm at gallons over hours, exactly what I wanted. I want gallons over hours. That's what per pretty much means. It means division. So let's figure out what our numerator gives us. 3 times 60 times 60. That gives us 10,800 gallons per hour. A lot of gallons, right? Let's take a look at our last problem here. I am driving 45 miles per hour. What is my speed in feet per second? So this is going to take a little bit because it's a, notice how I'm going from miles to feet and hours to seconds. So I'm going to be converting twice. So I have 45 miles per hour, which means 45 miles for one hour. Now. Let's, I'm going to com convert excuse me, miles to feet first. So we're going to look back at our chart. How are miles and feet related? 
there's 5,280 feet in one mile, right? So I'll have one mile, because notice, I need to make my miles cancel out, right? To 5,280 feet. I am now at feet. I have accomplished one part of my task. Now, I now need to get this hour to seconds. So, across the way, notice how I'm kind of going kitty corner, okay? Because it's on the bottom, I need to start on the top for hour. So, one hour, let's go back to seconds, so I'm going to start it, go to minutes next. So, one hour is 60 minutes. Hours are gone now because they were kitty corner from each other, they're across, diagonal. Um, I need seconds now. So, six, no, whoop. 60 minutes is not, there we go, 60 minutes is not in a second, that would be silly. One minute, however, is in 60 seconds. There we go, minutes are gone. Notice how I have feet over seconds. So I have accomplished my goal. Now let's multiply our numerators. So 45 times 5,280 is 237,600. Now, notice how I have some, some stuff in my denominator as well. So I go to 60 times 60, which is 3,600. Let's divide that, and I find I get 56, or 66, excuse me, feet per second. And that's the end of this video. See you later, Sabres.